fact that every culture known to anthropologists has practiced some sort of musical tradition kind of implies that there's something biologically driving humans to enjoy music. Almost everything that has cross-cultural consistency usually helps with either survival or reproduction. But music doesn't seem to innately do either of those things, and that makes it kind of confusing to evolutionary psychologists. But it's a little bit less confusing when you consider the fact that communication is obviously adaptive, and the fact that music is basically just communication. The fact that communication is adaptive is a little bit more intuitive. A species that can communicate between its members is probably going to be able to survive a little better than a species that can't, but the fact that music is communication is going to take a little more time to dissect. So the reason that psychologists at this point think that music is a form of communication is because prosody is a form of communication. Prosody basically describes the aspects of human speech that aren't the words. Prosody is the different pitches and dynamic ranges that you use while talking, and those are basically things that are music. And most animals have some sort of prosody. Usually it's a little more obviously adaptive, like with frogs and birds, there's always a mating call of some sort, and often there's a danger call as well, and those things will obviously help those species reproduce and survive. But animals that are more closely related to humans get a little more complicated in their prosody. Their prosodies can express all sorts of different things, and it starts to get into something a little more emotional. So the fact that prosody can communicate emotions is in a way obvious, but its limits and specifics are a little less obvious. So researchers have found a few different ways to isolate the prosodic elements of communication from the lingual aspects. One way they've done this is to just make people listen to people who are speaking a language that they don't understand and see to what extent they're able to pick out the emotional intent of the speech they're hearing. And generally people are able to do this pretty well. Researchers have also used audio editing technology to make the words of a speech less understandable so that nobody can pick out any of the words, so that nobody who speaks any language will be able to pick up on what the person is actually saying, and people are still able to figure out what emotion the speaker was trying to portray. There are several parallels between music and prosody that researchers have been able to pick out. For example, prosody and music can both have cadences. In music, a cadence is basically a set of chords that lets the listener know that this musical phrase is done, and with prosody, people tend to be able to indicate through intonation that their sentence is done. Even a grammatically complete sentence doesn't sound like it has ended if you don't end it. It's just awkward. A researcher named Diana Deutsch who studies this kind of thing actually had a recording of human speech that she transcribed and composed a melody out of. And the melody is taken from a segment of speech which kind of ends on a comma. Oddly enough, its melodic structure implies a half cadence, which is a kind of cadence that composers use when they want to let a phrase be a little bit more open. So it's possible that composers are taking things that were biologically inclined to perceive a certain way and make those things happen through music. And this is probably very innate because even infants are able to pick up on not only whether somebody has completed a sentence prosodically, but whether a musical phrase has finished. And in terms of emotion, prosody seems to have some sort of instinctual code that indicates whether the speaker is happy, sad, angry, or afraid. At one point I transcribed a part of Winston Churchill's speech that he made when he was trying to reassure the people of England that they would be safe through military protection, and the melody that resulted from that is clearly in a major key, and it's at about 90 beats per minute and very calm. And by calm I mean musically it sounds like a calm melody, and prosodically it sounds like he's just being reassuring. To approach it a little more scientifically, a few researchers have taken transcriptions of human speech from people who were reading Winnie the Pooh, and when reading as Eeyore instead of Tigger, people were more likely to use a large amount of minor intervals instead of major intervals. And in music, melodies that tend to follow a major mode and have more major intervals tend to sound happy or excited. So basically, music is able to take advantage of little codes that we have innately inside our genes that code and decode a variety of emotions and intents. And since people are in general inclined to communicate, when they hear music, they find that satisfying to the urge to connect with somebody. Because in reality, they kind of are. So it makes a lot more sense to think about music from an evolutionary perspective when you realize that music is actually sort of objectively, or at least universally, communicating something. And it also helps explain why people have such emotional reactions to music, because people generally have emotional reactions to other people's emotional communication. 
So I think studying the psychology of this actually really enriches my experience of listening to music because I have a deeper understanding and appreciation for where exactly it's coming from. And I think that composers, performers, and even audiences could benefit a lot from understanding prosody a little better. And I hope that you want to learn more about this because I'm going to make a few other videos and I encourage you to like and subscribe and share this and maybe support me on Patreon. If you feel like anything I explained isn't completely clear, feel free to leave a comment and ask a question. You can find me on Twitter and do the same.